Welcome back to another episode of the Big Ass Cornhole Podcast. Sean and Dane are with you again. And boy, have we been talking some bags today, man. We have been talking Just a lot of bags today. Bags and bags. And it's Whew. nice. Um, so this part got completely deleted last week because for whatever reason, um, our microphones just decided... Fuck you. Don't want to work. Apparently there's some sabotaging of like Zoom going on I, with I don't microphones. Know. I don't yeah, know. Zoom, get your shit together. Yeah. Okay, Pissing seriously. Me like off. I, we've been doing some research and if you use Zoom, apparently they can hijack your microphones and stuff. So you have to restart your computer in order to end that connection. We learned the hard way and we wondered why our mics wouldn't work every like episode or two. Yeah. And we had luckily we normally do sound check. We did last week. We thought it was working decide not to but this week we're back and producing audio gold well guess what you just gotta hit restart sometimes all right dane let's go ahead and we got a busy episode we do okay? we do so let's go ahead and tell the folks what we're sipping on at home in the second we call what you drinking <laughs> what you drinking well this del- 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 delightful beverage is brought to you by our favorite bag company local bags guys we say it every week pro blend resin go get yourself some Visit localbagcompany.com and grab yourself a set. And then, Sean, we're sipping on little Woodford. Woodford Reserve, a uh, little gift to Dane for shoveling your driveway. Thank you and, very much, uh, by the way. Kicked it in the clutch. So and it wasn't because I was a lazy piece of shit. I was out of town. No, he was out of town. But, uh, yeah, we had a hefty amount of snow roll through here, so we figured help a brother out. and You get bourbon. We get bourbon. So cheers, cheers. everybody. All right, so Cornhole Peeps, we have another excellent episode planned for you all today. We're going to set up the, kind of just lay out the foundation of the best of the bags bracket that we're going to start breaking down next week and do our annual bag draft and seedings. Then we have some bags to review. We have three series of bags to review today. Up today are Kill Shots P90, Vortex Bag Shelter, and Reynolds Bag Thunder. Oh, boy. And then, if that's not enough... We're going to be joined by two um, two stud players, a legend of Cornhole, Mr. Derek King, and an up-and-coming, maybe possible future legend, Mr. Tony Smith. Hell yeah. All right. I'm excited about that one. Well, it's be before good. we get to all that, we're going to let you know what's going on in our Cornhole lives in a segment we call In and Around the Hole. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Brought to you by Airwolf Athletics, helping athletes become the alpha in all aspects of life. Visit airwolfathletics.com, use code BIGASS, but it'll get you 10% off. And at this point in your cornhole life, if you haven't added a set of the sexiest bags around, you're doing something wrong. That's right, folks, it's Blackjack Cornhole Bags. You get free shipping, amazing customer service, it's a no-brainer. So go to blackjackcornhole.com, grab your set today, and because we love you all, our code BIGASS is going to save you 10%. Yeehaw! So we before do. we jump into the episode, I got to give givers. a quick shout out to um, Big Daddy, our fa- some of our favorite people. We got to get them on the show. Hell yeah. They came out with uh, some new hoodies. I had to snag one. Um, just amazing quality. So Big Daddy, big shout out to you guys. And this sweet new hat might be my new favorite hat. It is pretty sexy. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I'm digging um, the colors on it. Bangarang, uh, Team Bangarang. Love you guys. Bang, bang. Love it. Hats are awesome. He said, I ordered two hats. And guess what? He sent me matching bags to go with one of my hats. Oh, lovely. Superman style. What's up? All right. So last week, uh, you had league, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. How'd it go? I was hoping you weren't going to ask that. Okay. Because uh, the week before when it didn't get recorded, you guys had a good week. We did, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we started off 5-1 and one and then uh, brought it back to 500 last week. Okay. Um, it was rough all around, but uh, yeah. Oh, well. Still had some fun. Um, I actually threw quite a bit. I was slow um, on Wednesday morning, and my assistant didn't have any patience, so I set up the boards in the lobby. I was caught up on everything, and I told her <laughs> I'm going to be throwing for a while. So I actually um, busted out. We're going to be reviewing some of the Ultra Bags, the new ones that came out. Oh, baby. Psycho X, uh, Viper B. I finally broke in a good, like a good set of Viper Cs. Um, uh, what else did I throw? Some Mother Shuckers. Just a whole bunch uh, of the... Reynolds Thunder, the Vortex, the P90. I mean, I just... Did you throw that new Reynolds carpet bag at all? I did not get a chance to do that yet. It was... I, I literally... I just... I forgot about my... Break, break it in board. first and then throw it. I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. Did you throw it yet? I just... I broke mine in and threw it a little bit. You like it? They just need to break in. Yeah. Okay. It's a nice bag once, once it's broken in, but that'll, look, that'll come next week or the week after. Yeah. Soon felt enough. good. Um, finally feeling pretty consistent again. Just... And I played, you know, was just messing around playing Ghost and just... 
see how I was doing. So starting to feel a little bit more comfortable in my game again, feel a little more confident. So looking forward to, um, we, you know, other cornhole news outside of this, we mm. booked our trip. We're going to the ACL open number eight Dang. in Kansas city. Yeah. So if you're going to be in Kansas city, you'll see us there too. We plane, uh, planes are booked. Hotels are booked. So we're going to be there. Uh, we'll get in Thursday and then we will leave Sunday afternoon at some point. Pretty excited. Cause they just announced that, there's going to be some USA cornhole, some high school and college division stuff. So I'm pretty excited. It's going to be awesome, man. I'm I'm really excited to see that high school and college levels shake out. I think uh, I think you'll see a lot of fun bags being thrown that weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm excited. So it'll be just a fun filled weekend. So and we know a bunch of people down there. Good to see our boy Josh Seller and and his better half Amanda, obviously. So oh, I thought you were going to say Wally, his better well, half. And, well, and Wally, <laughs> yeah, it's true. And Wally, obviously Wally, we love you. K9, go check out K9 unit if you haven't for the best live stream to cornhole. But um all right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So we're going to jump right into the bag reviews today. And the bag reviews are, um, well, go ahead. You, oh, okay. Yeah, if you want to. You, I, you, to. You've, you always kind of hesitate. You, you feel it, and it feels like a bag of sand. Mm. And our bag review, as always, are brought to you by Bagsboard, the maker of the original cornhole bag backpack. Not a copycat, the OG of the original cornhole bag backpack. If you need patches to go on your sweet-ass bag, Bagsboard has literally some of the best around. So stop what you're doing. If you're on Facebook and you're like, I-, I need a cornhole bag backpack, just go to Bags Board. Just grab the best. You're gonna get the best quality. It's not gonna fall apart, and you don't need a set. You don't need a backpack that's gonna carry eight sets. You just don't. If you try really hard, you could fit eight sets in that bag. You can. You just need to get you know those illegal. Uh, Comfortably, you can fit five. Just gonna get the illegal lucky bags in there. Yeah. And then like you can fit eight. Yeah, correct. Um, <laughs> but yeah, bagsboard.com. Grab yours today. Mm. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the bag review. I'm going to let you start with Reynolds Thunder. You want to start with Thunder? It? Yeah, go ahead. No. It's a little Thunder. I broke these bad boys in. Just holding this bag, I always just, uh, I don't know, I just hear the song Thunder in the background the whole time. Does it make you feel like Jeff Reynolds is standing behind you? <sighs> is is he the Thunder? I'm just saying he likes his bag. That might, that might be his new nickname. Ooh. Jeff the Thunder Reynolds, mm. right? It's got a nice, got a nice ring. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> so as we alluded to, um, the Thunder, we've been seeing uh, Jeff Reynolds throwing this bag a lot. Um, he is an airmail master with this thing. It's a, it's a really nice bag. Um, it feels like a Reynolds bag. It does, yeah. It's so that it's got sense. that, it's got that nice thickness to it. That's, uh, you know, it's just not. It's not overly thick, not, not feel, it's little, like, like flimsy piece of shit. Yeah, feel, exactly. Like in your hand. Like I'm not saying like material wise, but like just in your hand, the template yeah, that thickness, and everything, you that can fullness. Get a full like grip a of it. Um now speed rating, I mean this is like a control go bag yeah. right in that range. Um there's not a huge variance in the speeds on each side. So like the slow side I'm rating at like a six seven. Fast side I'm like a seven eight really on it i so um, I would go a little slow and i i threw these um after i broke them in again this slow side material it, it it's very dependent on humidity and yeah everything. exactly my boards at work are pretty quick it's pretty dry in there they're it's pretty slow yeah I mean, I, i'm gonna put this as like a five and the slick side maybe like a, a seven maybe an eight but I, i'm gonna go more towards a seven towards yeah a i was just i don't know it, it felt very similar on each side to me i was able to stop both sides yeah so yeah. to me like that just means it's controllable it is. um but it's very, very hole forgiving. Even though it's a thick bag and it's a little bit slower, these bags just slink in, and it has that, it has that knack for just kind of like really grabbing yeah. in the hole, even if you miss it a little right, little left, and it's an easy get back. This um, is this is like the chubby cousin to the the typhoon. Yeah, the I agree. typhoon is like your tall, thin, athletic looking cousin, yeah. and then this is the short, chubby one that'll surprise you with how athletic he can actually be. Sean, why are you describing yourself? I'm, I, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> um, I like, it came out of my hand. I actually, I did, I like this. It felt comfortable air mailing with this. This is a bag because of the template and because of how thick it is. I have to really, really focus on making sure the bag is flat. Mm-hmm. If not, it does kick. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, just, I think a lot of it has to do with its girth. And the slick side material, I kept telling myself, 
is not that fast. Yeah, it's not that fast. Like, I can throw it pretty aggressively. It feels I... like it will, but like there's it's not a super synthetic. No, it's more feel it feels like it. a cotton almost. Yeah, exactly. It's like a cotton linen. I, I don't know how else to describe. It. it feels like a you go out to dinner and you have like a really nice napkin on your lap. Mm-hmm. That's kind of mm-hmm. what it feels like. And that's um, probably why Jeff wants to get into my stock at work, but, but all someday all, Jeff. It's a nice bag if you like OG Reynolds, like you like the feel of like a a pro advantage, but you're looking for something other than carpet, but you like a fuller feeling bag and you want some control to it. Thunder's going to be right up your alley. Heck yeah. Round a template, um, obviously impeccable clothing seam. So I was going to, I was going to talk about their, their seams and stuff. It's Reynolds. It's Reynolds. Everyone knows that. You're going to get, I mean, you can order them and you're going to get them that week. Um, there's, I mean, we've said enough about Reynolds throughout the, throughout the years, but all in all, it's another great great bag. bag. I'm going to turn this bag around so you can actually, we actually got the sweet, drippy blackjack version of the of the thunder bags here so let's go design wise reynolds has revamped their basic style of bag Mm -hmm. we obviously got the blackjack version because why wouldn't you get the blackjack version of a bag you're going to get with 10 percent off exactly if you just put a big (laughs) ass anyways design wise i like it i like the we got a white bag again i like white bags it got like this tannish kind of Right, spade yeah, in little the background. Tote, little tote page. And then like we got the back. dripping blackjack logo with the blue and the pink. I'm a big fan of it. I designed the bag, so I kind of like it. Um, so I'm going to go with 90. And uh, I like it as well. Give me give me an 87 just because you designed it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Performance-wise, I'm going to be interested to see where you go. So performance for me, like, I mean, I like this bag. It's so whole forgiving that it's hard to, like, knock it for anything else if i would i would say it's probably a little little fast for me i don't know like if you throw a lower bag it just seems to really scoot up the board i'm gonna i still again the just finding the hole though i mean i'm I'm gonna give this one an 80 flat okay uh, yeah for me it's i prefer if you gave me this and you gave me the typhoon i'm gonna gravitate gravitate towards the typhoon just because i like a looser bag in my hand just yeah. when I throw it. I didn't dislike this bag. It's just a little bit too – it was a little bit full for just – for the, all the bags that we've thrown now. Like if I would have handed this bag to me back when I had a pro advantage and I was throwing those all the time, I probably would have really liked it. I just learned over time what I like more. I'm going to go 78. Okay. I mean just – I seem to just throw thicker, fuller bags better. Yeah. I'm just it. more accurate with it. So. All right. So let's move on to – a bag that I think is going to be making some uh, some noise this season. Okay, we're going to go to Vortex Bag Shelter. Right? Heck yeah! I think Vortex Bag is our boy came out with a I gem. Think it's a bag company that I, I think is by next year at this time. You add maybe one other bag, and you really round out the whole arsenal and the lineup of bags. I think that they're going to be making some big noise on and the and the whole scene. I really like this bag. Very similar slow side as what's on the Reynolds. Um, so think like Surefire type slow side. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get like a Viper slick side. So you get like that five on the slow side. Um, again, humidity dependent. It can play faster. It can play a lot slower. And then you're going to get like a pretty standard nine on the slick side. It's a super rounded template. A pretty thin bag in your hand. The cool thing is this is one of the more rounded templates. We said the same thing about the Vortex Zone. They're very rounded templates. It feels just nice and natural coming out of your hand. Like this these this template of the bag almost wants to come out of your hand flat. Mm-hmm. I threw these really well. I was happy because I, I love Josh. Um I think he may I think he really landed a gem here. I was already a big fan of the zone, but if I wanted something like if the boards were really fast and I wanted something a notch down, this would be the bag I'd go to. We've already talked about it. Next regional we play doubles, we'll probably, yeah, we'll end probably up throwing be throwing this. this yeah. Um it's a really nice bag. It's a compliment bag that'll fit us both. I feel comfortable throwing either side of this bag. Um the only downside when you throw a really rounded template is you gotta be a little bit more accurate throwing your push bags. Mm-hmm. You don't have the corners to kind of grab and pull. But this bag is melty enough where if you can just go hole hunting and you're fine. Yeah, I mean if if you just go slick side, even if you miss it a little right or left, but you catch it like a corner or something, oh, yeah. it's going to move it enough closer to the hole that it's it's doing its job. I mean, if it doesn't quite fall in, it's going to put it closer to the hole. Yeah. He has like a, it's a little bit of a flatter fill inside. It feels pretty universal, but it's a flatter fill. Um, so it just 
it just kind of fills out nicely. And it's probably the smallest the closing closing scene we've seen on a bag to date. Yeah, I mean, it it's, is. It's nice. He's, I mean, it, at mo- it's probably about like maybe an inch and inch and a half wide. I mean, it is. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is. It's a it's a very small closing seam. But again, so it's a it's similar template to like a Reynolds, like with a rounded, but this is even more so. I would say this is not quite as rounded as the zone. I I, can't, I mean, it's pretty damn close to the same template, I would say. Yeah, I, would, I mean, I think it's just all about the fabrics and stuff, and like, you know, these are broken in, so I mean, they just sit differently. Yeah, but all in all, big fan of this bag. Uh, again, so speed, slow side, we'll call it a five. Slick side, we're going to call it like a nine. Um, very whole forgiving. The rounded template again. It comes out of your hand very nice. It's very controllable. Just plays overall really, really nice. Heck yeah. Um, perform uh, design score. We got the new um, updated kind of standard version, I guess if you want to call design. I like it. I like the color scheme. He sent us the orange with the black. I like that. Uh, I like the font he uses with Vortex. I know I make a big deal about that, but to me, you have to pick the right font that stands with yeah, your got company. Yeah. It just it seems like it fits. Like it just that looks like it should be Vortex. Like the font was made for it. Overall, I like the colors for a standard design bag. It's really well done. So again, it's not a custom. It's not super flashy. So I'm not going to put it up super super high. But I'm going to give it like a solid eighty four. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I was thinking eighty five actually. Okay. And it's uh it's orange, which is always my favorite color. Performance wise. Performance for me, I mean, dude, I really like this bag, man. I'm gonna, it's it's a touch slower than the Thunder, yeah, in my opinion. Um, yeah, and I I just I liked its I liked the speed. Um, it was just ending up right at the hole each time. So, dude, give give me an eighty three on that. I'm I'm a fan. I'm actually going higher. I'm surprised. Yeah. Um, I threw this bag really, really well. And if that's, and to me, that's one of the things like if it's, if I throw it well, I feel like it should just score higher regardless of like, if I think it's a junk bag or not, like if it throw, if I throw it well, that should be like how I'm scoring a bag for performance yeah. wise. I threw this bag really well. Um, I threw a deck around with it. I, you know, it's nothing to brag about, but like I got like a 90. I mean, to me, like that's a pretty yeah, good that's bag good. for me. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going 90 flat out. I mean, I figured go with a deck around score. Let's, let's roll with it. And. I think for me, if it was just a touch fuller, I would like it a little bit more. Okay, I like the loose floppy. I, I love yeah, it. I think no, it's a great I, bag. I know you do. We, you and I are just polar opposites on what we like in bags. So, all right. P ninety kill shots. P ninety. Now this bag's been out for a minute. Yes, um, it has. This is probably next to the three fifty seven. If I had to guess, they're probably their best selling bag. This is kind of. I guess this would be like the replacement for. They're uh, their M134. So if you are an OG kill shot fan and like they had like that dual slick bag, this is a little bit slower than the M134, but think of think of a smaller OG kill shots template pro sniper. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a really nice bag. Yeah, I was a I've fan. had this bag the reason we haven't reviewed this bag sooner, because this bag's actually been sitting in my office. This is one of the sets that if I had a few minutes I wanted to just go practice, I was throwing this bag. Because I love both materials that are used on this bag, and I like the small template. I've always, we've talked about OG 357, still to this day, one of our favorite bags with a smaller template. They brought that back with this P90. You have on the on the slow side, you have like that reverse, uh, like slide right type material. Yeah. That's going to play like a, like a 6, 7, depending on board conditions. It, it's very waxy when you first get it, right? It's almost going to feel like it has a buildup. Just keep throwing it as it breaks down. It almost gets into the material and just just slows it down just a hair, and it just becomes super melty. On the slick side, again, you have that Viper Slick. It's it's easily broken in. It's a 9. Um, again, I threw this bag really, really well. Um, I know for me, I would throw this bag in singles. I know for you, this is going to be too fast. Yeah, it was it was a little too fast for me, but... Um... Yeah, all the all the things you said about it are what I like about it. It has that OG template. It's small in your hand. The thing's just it is so hole friendly. Um, I mean, I think a lot of that has to do with how much you've thrown it. Yeah. But that being said, it's it's a nice bag, man. I I like that they're getting back to that template. I would throw that over any Gen two. I, if I if I had any with. criticism, I would like to see Kill Shots just clean up the closing seam a little bit. Like it's just it seems like. It's just too big. Like it, it, it feels yeah, like it for is, a bag uh, this small, it doesn't need to be like a good three inch. I mean, that's closing easily seat. double. I mean, it's double the length of the vortex and Reynolds. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just, feel, I would like it just to tighten up just a little bit. Um, 
but again, overall, big fan of this bag. I can see why this bag was so popular. I was hesitant to kind of try it. Um, we had tried the the mob. We tried some of the other ones. Um, I got it. I was able to snag a set off somebody that they were selling them. I just wanted to try them out, see what they were like. And as soon as I got them, I knew I was going to like them just material wise. Okay. Um, throw them really well. I'm going to go just a notch below the vortex shelter. So I'm going to go like an 88 for these performance wise. Okay. For me, I'm going to go just a little below everything that we've had. I'm going to give this one a 77. Okay. Um, design score for me, you know, I, I, as soon as you see it, I think call of duty. Oh yeah. But then I really look at it, and it reminds you of like Call of Duty Ghost, which is yeah. like the worst game they ever came out with. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna probably uh, I'll, I'll I'll give the design score like a 75. So we have like the black and gray version. My one criticism on this is that I think the designs sometimes are a little hard to see on it. Like they don't really pop. yeah, they don't pop out. So that's what to me is gonna bring it down just a little bit. So yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go like a 70 on the design. Okay, All right. fair enough. Cool. All right, so we have a new segment we're going to be bringing to you guys. Yeah, right, we before do. Before we get into the best of the bags breakdown, just kind of an overall summary of it. Sean, Bob Rossett, we paint us going, the picture. We are going to be presenting you a new segment called Shot of the Week. All right? And this new segment, okay, is we are going to – we are asking people, if you see a shot on live stream where you're just like, holy shit, that was amazing, tag us in it, message me. Let me know what minute mark it is. I'll da- I'll take it from there. That's exactly what I did from here. Yeah. Or if you're nice and you want to clip it and send it over that way. Shout out to Jay. Jay we'll give you a shout uh, out. Pat- uh, uh, an OG patron. He might have been our first patron on. He's uh, he saw the shot. He's like, you gotta you gotta use this first shot of the week for your first one. So just to set it up, we um, it was at the Advanced Blind Draw in Florida where Garrett Rawls was partnered up with Noah Wooten. Mm-hmm. Garrett Rawls is cousin of Alan and Alex Rawls, who both had stellar weekends as well. Yes, they did. So if you're if you're listening to this, we're going to kind of walk you through what's happening. If you're watching on YouTube, enjoy this treat. So Dan's going to go ahead and pull this up here real quick. Yep. So we're setting it up here. Um, they have two bags left. Garrett's first bag, he goes for a hard push down the middle, and there's two bags. His two bags are positioned right in front of the hole. He's going to step out wide, and he throws his last bag. Now, his bag, dirty bags, <laughs> yeah, two of his I opponent's bags off the side of the board, and his bag that he threw and knocked the other two bags off, slides slick side down back and just drips slow motion back into the hole. So he And, and the best part about this, this was game-winning shot. So if you're, again, if you're watching on YouTube, watch this. Dirty bags, Bang. and then oh, oh, it's not done, and it slips back in the hole. That is just fucking ridiculous. I mean, that was that he put three bags in the hole. Yeah. Oh no, two. Yeah, he put two bags in the hole while knocking it off. I mean, that's right there. That's while knocking two off. While knocking two bags off, it wasn't just one. It wasn't like an and one. He dirty bag. He knocked two bags off the board, and he slid his. Bag so the craziest in. part, right there at that moment after that shot, he's sitting ten to one. In that round. Ridiculous. 10 to 1, he's up. Now, if you were a Patreon member, you're privileged to this. We actually posted this on the Patreon page last week just because I'm like, I got to share this. This is too good. But if you're listening to the episode and you want to check it out, uh, go to our YouTube page. I'll post it up there or just watch the episode Oof. on YouTube. You can get there. So, again, Yeesh. he – it's just un- – and the best part about it was that was the game-winning shot. Like the kid didn't – the guy that he was thrown against didn't even need to throw his last bag. Yeah. It was over. <laughs> We, we got to see it one more time just because, I mean, it's a, it it's a double dirty Flop, bag. Steps way outside. And leaves he's his blocker to, in place. And really, he's just, just trying to just push and sneak in his bag. I I, don't, I would love to ask him if he was trying to dirty bag those. I don't yeah. think he was trying to. How but can it was you? The How best, can you? The best result. So, Garrett Rawls, congratulations. You're our very first nomination for a shot of the week. That, yeah. And right. deservedly so. That was nasty. Next week, we're going to be setting up the best of the bags bracket. Hell so yeah. every, uh, the, it was we started the first year we started the podcast where we picked, I think it was just 16 bags, right? It was 16 bags. We did best of the bags. We opened it up for voting. All Game Changer won. Then last year, we opened it up to 64 total bags. Yeah. We split it up into four separate brackets. Uh, we had... Um, Slow and fast bags, but we had north and south, yeah. fast and slow, and they had to face off against each other. This year, we're blowing this shit up. We're Huge. going 64 bag bracket, two of them, all right? One side is all slow, 
one side is all slick, and we're going to have a slow bag versus slick final. And yes, before people could play like, oh, that's not a slow bag. All right, guys, you know how hard it is to pick sixty, just 64 quote-unquote slow bags? So yes, there's going to be some that are like, Maybe in some conditions it could play fast. And if you wanted, place, and like, if you wanted a voice on how we set up this bracket, join our Patreon account. Yes. We post all these polls. If you have an argument about what bags were included in all this stuff, I posted polls all last week about which two bags were the best for you know a particular bag company. So how we set this up is we tried our best to cover as many bag companies as we could. So next week we're going to do 64 of the slow bags that we picked. And then probably the following week we'll do 64 of the fast bags. After we do the 64 slow, we'll start releasing some of the polls just to kind of get the bracket working out. Um, On one side of the bracket, bracket, so when we do it next week, no bag company is allowed to have more than two series of bags on a particular side of bracket. We are not going to let any particular bag company have more than three total series of bags involved in the whole thing. So you might see um, like two Reynolds bags, two BG bags, but then if it's on the slow side, on the slick side, they're either not going to have any or they will have a maximum of one. Yeah. I think out of all the slow side bags that we'll be going on next week, out of 64 series of bags, there's a good 40 companies represented. Oh, easily, yeah. So we really tried to spread it out. We wanted to give love back to everyone that had given us bags to review. We tried our best to cover every single one. Um, sometimes it's hard. You know, we reviewed 140 series of bags last year alone. So we were, we've taken our time. We typically like to get this launched maybe like a week earlier. But when we do so many bag reviews, we wanted to make sure we were putting the time and due diligence in to really doing episodes. So we literally spent an hour before we started recording today just Talking going bags. through bags slow side getting our list side down getting our list down and then uh friday night i think we're gonna get together yeah we only got halfway through it yeah so. then we'll get, <laughs> and we'll get out all the slick side bags but next week we will be drafting um it's obviously it's got to be a competition sean versus dane will make some sort of side bet did you win last year i did i won everything you did every time you won. Yeah. won the first few years yeah. so i'm due for victory so yeah. it's basically what it is so okay. how we set it up is dane will draft Chuck, 30... you hand me my uh, fantasy football championship belt Chuck. sitting over there anyways dane's gonna draft uh 30 <laughs> dane's gonna draft 32 bags i'm gonna draft 32 bags and basically the order we draft them in is gonna be the seed for it so dane will have two right two number one seeds i'll have two number yep. one seeds and we'll kind of go through there what we have to decide is do we want all my bags on one side and yours on them or do we want like my one versus your 16, you know what I mean? Versus like, what the well, I mean, have? there's there's a lot of different ways. And then the other part is like, are we doing just a full 64 bag bracket of slow versus 64 fast and then just having the top from each one face off at yes, the end? Yes, that's how we're doing it. All right, yeah. so we'll see who's, in the, who's finals, the winner at the end. In the, the end. finals of the best of the bags bracket, it is going to be a slow bag versus a fast bag. Mano a mano, who wins? I like it. So we're going to be setting that up. So again, it's going to be 64 slow bags. 64 slick bags, the best bags. That's 128 total bags we're going to be doing. Don't argue. If you want to have a say in <laughs> Don't this. Don't argue. <laughs> again, just, it's just fun for, this you're not for allowed, fun. right? This is for fun. And I've already had bag come in. This is something that you're able to go cheer on. Bag makers, if you're listening to this, listen, if you want to offer a set of bags to win that vote, do whatever you want. Yep. I had people messaging me last year like, is, isn't that considered cheating? There is no fucking There's cheating. No this cheating. is a game, man. Yeah. If you want to win, you do whatever you want to do. We had the up, almost the upset of the century last year with uh, Cooper Bags. Yeah, Cooper, Cooper Bags. Bags came out, out of nowhere. Left fear field. They took second place, right? Yeah. The SOB3. Oh, well, yeah. Do you guys know that bag? Yeah. You don't. Do some research. Because <laughs> Cooper Bag, I guarantee you, that, that cult following is going to come out strong again. Yeah. And if you sleep on them. Uh, we're not going to sleep on them again this no, year. Hell no. But Cooper Bags 3 almost won the whole thing. I think they lost to Vikings. Yeah, it was a Vikings. I think it was PG it, yeah. Vikings last year that won it all. But, um, but, yeah, I'm excited to get it going. It's always fun to see how many votes you get. I mean, some of these polls are getting, like, 5,000 votes. It yeah. just sees... You know, just to see who has like the big cult following. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of talk in the world today about you know PEDs and you know baseball with Barry Bonds not getting in and whatnot. But we're supporting PEPs, which are performance enhancing posts. Yep. So, by all means, bag makers do whatever the heck you want. And I'm excited to see one what people come up with, and two who might take the cake because I'm feeling. I feel there's going to be another kind of cult following oh, yeah. in there's, there. There's I like, dude, I 724 Army is going to come out strong. They, and they, they're going to they be hard to beat. Last man. Year. I'm just going to say they, they were, but 
that group is probably 10 times the size it was at the time of this than it was last year. This is year. what I want to see. Everyone talks a big game in the 724 Army, right? Yeah. Are they there just to buy bags to resell them, or do they actually believe in the product and they're going to vote for this stuff? I guess we'll see. only time will tell, my Let's friend. Let's see. Cue that rap horn. Let me, let me do that real quick. It's not it's not working. All right. Reach us at Instagram and Twitter at Big Ass Cornhole. And Facebook at Big Ass Cornhole Podcast. Thanks again to our sponsors. Visit airwolfathletics.com for all your cornhole swag. Be sure to use code Big Asp and you'll get 10% off. And localbagcompany.com for the best bags in the business. Is Pro Blend Resin still going? It is. All right, so Pro Blend 15. Pro Blend 15 gets you 15%, 15% off. off. That's huge. Bagsport.com for the sexiest backpacks and patches in the game. And BlackjackCornhole.com for the sexiest bags around. Code Big Asp is going to save you 10%. Patreon. We've been mentioning it all episode. Go to Patreon.com slash Big Asp Cornhole. We have three different tiers. We would love support. Um, if you want to interact with us, we have three separate tiers. Each one of them offers different benefits. We're giving bags away. We're actually pulling names tonight to give more of these bags away. Um, so stay tuned. Join us. But we want to give a quick shout out to the newest members of our Patreon community. Al Almanza, Jessica Almanza, Christopher Jones, Eddie Bave. I'm going to say sorry. <laughs> Jake Harris, Dave Sadie, Dustin Arnold, Robbie Wright, Jonathan Heitzman, Lucas Meyer, and Stacy Glidden. Heck Thank you very much. Yes. Welcome to part of our community, and we look forward to interacting with each one of you. Content. All right. Now stay tuned as we're going to be joined by Mr. Derek King and Tony Smith. Hell yeah. It's going to be a fun one. As always, we hope you throw it straight, and it's nothing but four baggers from here on out. Cornhole it. Later. And this interview is brought to you by Cornhole Solutions. Do you have a cornhole question? Find your answer at cornholesolutions.com. They offer the best boards in the business. I just saw their post today offering up just clear the warehouse sale, $150 a set, free shipping. These are pro finished boards, people. Jump on it. They have really cool designs. Visit cornholesolutions.com. Uh, code Big Asp. Yep, for 10% Get off. Get you 10% off. I don't know if that applies to the $150 boards or not, but Why not try it? give it a whirl. Let's see. Welcome back to the Big Ass Porno Podcast, where we are now joined by two ACL pros, Mr. Derek King and Tony Smith. What's going on, guys? Not much. How about you? Nothing, man. Uh, so you guys are coming fresh off of like a training session. I mean, Tony, I heard you're like the bag boy. So you're kind of just there <laughs> horsing around yeah. while watching uh dk you had a training session before this right uh yes how'd it go uh it went went really good um did about five hours of uh instructional coaching um worked with two two people from uh, up in massachusetts um overall i think they were really satisfied you know uh with you know everything that uh they took in today and you know they still have you know four or five hours tomorrow you're just trying to give tony some competition up there so it's nice of you you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so dk let's start with you kind of give can i think if people are new to cornhole they i think they know your name they might just not know as much of your backstory if people are like super involved in the game they know it but just give a quick backstory I mean, you've been involved in the game pretty long time right uh yeah about 14 15 years you were like one of the original junior prodigies right like i mean you were you for you you're king of cornhole right uh, no, never, never won a king of cornhole. I made it to um, a final four, um, okay. final eight, uh, two final fours and a final eight. How old um, were you? Like, age, uh, when you made it, yeah. Um, I was 13, 14, and 15, I believe. That's, pr that's a pretty solid run, yeah. though. Yeah. I mean, it's I more than I was doing yeah. at 13, 14, <laughs> and 15. <laughs> so then um, you joined on with the ACL – as a pro, you had um, you obviously had a nice run with uh, with Trey, right? You guys, how how was that whole experience? You know, being on TV and do, I mean, obviously, you know, it's cornhole's grown since you've been involved in it. So, what was your experience like? You know, being on the main stage under the lights, all that stuff. Okay, yeah. So, um, my uh, very first year of playing uh, ACL uh, was when they had the the pro division, and um, I I played with Jordan Camba uh, that year. And we were actually fortunate enough to win the first ever uh, pro doubles uh, kickoff battle. Um, and then that next year I played with Trey and uh, we were kind of thrown together last minute as partners. 
and we went on to uh, win a world championship that year. And it was really cool, you know, playing with Trey and developing the friendship that we had. That's pretty sweet. So, like, do you feel like you're, um, like, these days, like, especially, like, as a doubles player, do you feel like you're underrated in a way? Um, yes. <laughs> That's Tony. Hey, Tony Chimes, I, I and agree. I like it. I agree 100%. Dude, you've won, how many people can say that they've won besides some of the fire members, right? I mean, who else can say that they've won two world championships? You, Kamba. Has Baldwin won two in? I don't think he's won two in uh, in doubles, has he? Uh, he's won two nationals. I know he won yeah. one in singles. Um, I won a world championship in co-ed with Samantha Finley. There you uh, go. At ACO. Okay. And keep building that pedigree. Let's go. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of co-ed, though, our former world, uh, our current, I guess, world champion, yeah, co-ed yes, superstar. Tony. How was that experience? I mean, you were playing with Bella, who was obviously uh, pretty hyped you know, young lady coming into the league this year. How was, what was it like playing with her? I know you play, you guys kind of travel around quite a bit together, but yeah. did she perform better than you would have ever expected on that stage? Uh, she, she performed like better than I thought she would considering just like the overall like nerves. Yeah. She could be good. The main stage is just <clears throat> big deal. Like I thought she would be a little bit more like nervous, but she did really good. And played against Matt Guy, especially yeah, that's what I, that. That's what I was gonna say. Especially we, that. Well, you guys can maybe both talk about it. Is there a Matt Guy factor when you step up to the boards against him? Not for me, no, because okay. I've been playing against him since I was ten years old. Okay. <laughs> uh, for me, I either don't miss or I miss everything. Okay. So like, I really don't know. Speak of it as like, so Tony, like, remember? Do you remember like the first time you had to play Matt? Was that that's what I mean more like you're maybe by now you know you're a pro like we don't expect you to have yeah. like those but when you step up to him against like that first time like if you're like when you're an ACL rookie or something does he have like that advantage right away just because like the name power and everything for sure uh, actually my first time I played him was the to go undefeated for the qualifier okay for a pro and he started out like nineteen to four or something on me and then. Somehow fought, I fought back like 1916. But okay. I mean, I think, yeah, he definitely did have like that factor going okay. into it. At the same time, I was really just pumped to play him. That's, I mean, it's, then, it's cool. Yeah. Because just like I've never played at that high of a level before. And that was just really cool. You got you played in one of the my, one of the favorite matches I ever got to watch in a live stream is when you played Eric Davis in the qualifier. I mean, you oh, guys was, were just you guys were just hitting some ridiculous shots, and I just remember watching it, thinking because I'd heard about you, right? I hadn't get a, didn't get really a, a chance to like watch you a whole lot before that, but watching you frustrate Eric Davis doing <laughs> what he was known for better than he was, it was it was a thing of beauty, man. Like because he was visibly getting pissed off towards the end of that and it was a good match back and forth I mean, you kind of pulled ahead a little bit at the end but if you haven't seen that i, I don't know where somebody shared it the other day and i don't know it. yes yeah it's, so it's on Wu hole it was just a fucking crazy awesome match and i think that's actually a woohole match you can watch without any commentary because i think you asked chris not to to say anything yeah i asked him to not commentate when i'm throwing okay. like next to the camera <laughs> but like now match. that doesn't really bother me anymore it was a crazy match. I mean, you guys went back and forth hitting some ridiculous shots, but going back to like when you play Matt guy, you guys have such opposite strategies, right? Matt's just, he's going, he wants four bag every time. Not that you yeah. don't want four bag, but you like to control the board a little bit more. That's obviously becoming a more popular trend now. I guess it's coming back, right? You know, it used to be mm -hmm. thick and slick and, you know, muddy up the boards, air mail, then it wants slick bags. Now you're kind of, part of this young movement I feel like that's bringing back like the slower sticky bags is this something that you feel like is going to stay and is eventually going to be really successful because if we're being honest since like the slick back movement it's really been Noah it's really been the only guy that's won a singles championship playing like that style that rollback yeah. style and everything else has been slick bags do you think it's just a matter of time until we see this becoming like the new norm I, I'm really hoping so. Okay. And considering the way the boards are 
getting stickier and stickier and stickier at every event we're playing at. I really think it's going to be like the prominent style soon enough. Okay. It's also just so hard to play against like a Mac using that style though. Cause if you're not hitting that block perfectly every single time or like you're not cleaning up afterwards, he's scoring every single round because yeah. he just slides everything in. Did you, I'm, I'm assuming you guys saw the match um, when Alex Hicks played him. So Alex liked, I mean, he went pretty much hole for hole, but occasionally, you know, he threw a block every once in a while, rolled some backs. How impressive was his performance for you guys? That, that, pretty impressive. That was, that was a very good game. Um, I actually played with Alex um, last weekend um, okay. in Kansas City uh, for the first time. And it uh, kind of brought memories back to me of me being a little kid playing. Okay. Were you that and good? I, um, I mean, it, it's really hard to compare the two because that of, was a completely different of, game. Yeah, the then. conditions yeah. back then when I started playing, you know, we didn't have two sided bags. You know, we threw corn bags that might be different shapes and sizes. Um, so I mean, the conditions were way different. Um, I think if people had to play on those conditions today that we grew up on, um, you would not see as many pros as you do. I mean, Derek, that was a very political answer. Do you? But were, do you, you, were you better than him at the same age? That's <laughs> <laughs> right, not his question. If you had the same tools back in that day that Alex Hicks has today, you think that you would you could mop the floor with him? I don't think I could mop the floor with him. No, but I think we would be. Uh, It'd be a good game. We'd be pretty, pretty even. Listen, he's I a think. confident dude. He thinks he's gonna win. Like he can say it. it's all right. I mean, it's fine. You can take. It. I mean, a- well. Alex is a monster. So is, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying he's that. He's such a nice know, kid too. He's so crazy. That, hey, I can just crush he's... him because I no. I watched him you know, last. You know weekend. what's crazy kid to me is, is that you have Alex Hicks, who's 12, right? And then you have the Gore brothers, who are also 12, all crazy talented. You could not get two more different. Like kids, like then the twins, oh, and then no, so yeah. different. I, isn't that crazy? But they're both so, <laughs> so different. So and crazy. They're, they're both very entertaining. <laughs> they're either, either ones. There, let me ask you. So you've been around the game for a while. Do you like the transition the game is make? Like with the bag market and everything. Every player seems like they can find a bag for their game. Or did you like the everyone's going to kind of throw like the same style of bag because, you know, that's going to really show who has the most skill. I mean, you can make an argument either way, right? But I, I'm interested yeah, yeah. somebody who has been around the game for a while. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Um, I think from a professional aspect, um, I kind of like where the game has gone, you know, with, with so many bag options out there. Um, kind of like any other professional sport, you know, you look at – um, you know, everybody doesn't have to use the same equipment. Um, so I, I'm a fan of where the game has grown. Um, I think eventually it'll be kind of maybe cut down to not so many bag choices. Oh, I believe it's already working on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I, I love where the game slow is. Down considerably. <laughs> Please tell but me. I, tell me. I hate what game changers done to the game. Yeah. Once those came out. It was just slick bags everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it's but, not just game I mean, changers anymore. I mean, you have Vipers and, you know, Psycho. I mean, like all these crazy slick bags that, I mean, it just changes. Like, you don't have to throw a pretty, uh, pretty bag anymore. A literal, yeah. It's a literal game changer. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. Pretty much. I mean, and the, the thing is, when uh, I won uh, one of my world championships, I threw game changers. Yeah um i i threw them well and they are they are uh you know probably the most whole friendly bag so i mean i can't hate on people for using them i mean they're using it to their advantage you know uh i used them at one point <laughs> so you guys are both <laughs> you guys are both pretty you know obviously big name players out there you guys both decided to take a shot and go with a newer bag company contraband obviously you guys kind of roll as a crew and i i respect that that you guys are all kind of you know linked together what do you like that contraband is doing so far? How involved have you guys been, if at all, like in, you know, the the making of the bags, or you know, are you guys involved in like the testing process at all? I so much have not been exactly like super involved. Okay. But I'm getting more involved, like as of recently, and 
we have a, a new bag coming out soon whenever the midseason drop is available. Okay. And I kind of helped with the materials. Okay. So we're we're all kind of contributing. Okay. We all make decisions like and, and that's that's one together. thing that I love about it is it's you know not so much just uh you know one particular like person running the whole thing. It's you know it's kind of like you know like a family like we all make the decisions you know like we all have a uh, have a say in you know everything that goes on pretty much i mean if you're going pound for pound i mean talent wise on like squads right i mean i think you 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 throw up there in consideration obviously fire cornell i think just because of the sheer number you got to throw ultra up yeah, there right yeah. now i right. mean contraband i mean i th- right i'm trying to think of another bad company that has that group of player maybe maybe lucky um, I think there's some players that people aren't considering, like like a Trey Hunt. You know, I mean, who's probably going to make some noise. Trey Hunt is He's a not. shooter. That's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, guys like that. That I think shooter. that if you consider those kind of guys that they haven't made the name yet, but they're there. I think you put them up there. Maybe BG, but BG guys have got to show up on the main. You know, at, at some point. A lot of BG guys left too. Yeah. Oh, well, and listen, BG sponsored 90 percent of the league last year, so there was yeah, going to be some yeah. attrition. I think they only have professional wise and they got it's eric anderson ryan smith they have the texas yeah. boys yeah josh gross aj sims no they they oh, yeah, with TC with, uh, TC TC. yeah. Ah. so eddie grindersleeve and caleb batson and then there's one more uh there's um is sam beamer. with them still no beamer and uh ash and spees i know our bg guys okay. but i think that's their primary like their their core of six but mm. um yeah i mean do you oh, feel like be in, um yeah, yeah, that's right. That's they right. just that's right. That's right. That's right. They left yeah. uh, zero gravity. Do you feel like as a group, you guys are ready to kind of take that step and kind of, are you guys ready to be like the face? I mean, cause look at fire Cornell. I mean, you guys start winning nationals and stuff. It puts them on a map and it takes them to a whole new level. I mean, contraband ready for that. I, um, yes. Yeah, I definitely 100%. think so. Okay. Um, I, I definitely think you will see some, one contraband player at least um in the finals uh this national whether it's a team or whether it's a single who is all on who's all on team contraband let's list them off obviously you two noah devin harbaugh uh bella is on that team yeah trey hunt hunter thorn cameron belvin uh victor glass dalton mcclam okay uh tyson jason tyson Okay. Well, they're yeah. PDC, right? Okay. Jason okay. Jason and uh, Bobby. Okay. They, can, they can still make it. Okay. You never know. Yeah. Hey, they, <laughs> they win just as many tournaments as we do. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think you guys are kind of primed and ready to kind of make that big step. So I was uh, I was excited to see. It's always nice to see, like, newer companies kind of branch off. Because, I mean, when three years ago, it was Reynolds and all Cornhole. Yeah, I mean, yeah that's yeah. pretty I much think how much <laughs> How far off do you guys think it is from – a good majority of the pros. Let's say so. There's 256 of you guys. Let's say the top 50. How how long do you guys think it's going to be until like maybe the top 50 are making like a comfortable living playing just cornhole? And this can be payouts. It can be sponsorships. We're putting all the money combined. Okay. Uh, I mean, maybe everything combined. I want to say like three. So I'm going to say like two years. years. Two, yeah. Some. It's not going to be long. No. Especially with the like lucky yeah. yeah with what they did with trey they're yeah. raising the they're raising that bar oh yeah I, it's not just lucky i mean there's some of these bad contracts i've been hearing that are just that's there's outrageous big, there's going to be more big money that's going to be coming in every year and that's what's going to hurt the smaller bag manufacturers they're going to kind of get pushed out because yep. there's just not going to be anyone for them to sponsor because there's just going to be too much money going around um I, so it's it's going to be it's definitely interesting um last year at this time i think we were saying uh, you know five years from now we can see it you know a year later now we're saying it's probably within two i mean i don't think that's unreasonable to think of think of no, it i that. don't think so i think two years is is a good point i i think that these companies should start like actually broadcasting the numbers that they're putting out instead of keeping them all hidden like a lot of companies have non-disclosure agreements yeah like uh, like obviously that's their choice, but I feel like they should be putting those numbers out to help raise that bar. 
Well, I mean, that's a quick way to yeah. eliminate 90% of the bag makers out there. That too. They're going to see yeah. these bag contracts and be like, well, I'm ne- never going to be able to do that. <laughs> well, you figure like, like the, a- the average <laughs> bag sponsorship, right? So out of the 256, if I had to say the average, maybe $5,000. That might even be uh, high. So high. Around three. High. Yeah, okay. So and I would say that might even be high. But so I would say maybe the top 100 are getting 5,000. I was going to say, I don't know if you go, if you average it all out. Well, no, not. We're talking like everybody who doesn't have a. I I know for a fact there's tons, there's quite a few out there that don't have a bag sponsorship. They just have like a bag loyalty. Like they're just going to throw those bags. I mean, they're not getting. Yeah, I'd I'd probably go a couple thousand or a few thousand. Yeah. Which I mean, and if you're a small bag company and you want, and there's somebody's willing to take on a sponsorship and you, you, I mean, you want to take a chance on somebody. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, roll the dice. I mean, look at kill shots. I mean, kill shots wouldn't be yeah. what it was today without Kyle Malone and Dalton McClellan making it on the base stage. True. I mean, 100. Yes. percent I mean, especially with all the issues and stuff they have with production and stuff, people wouldn't have been loyal with them unless they were on the big stage and you know they saw those bags going in the hole on ESPN. I mean, that's a big reason that they made it that far. So, kind of, th- kind of going yeah. back to the the bag sponsorship, uh, you know, if like the average is like you know a couple grand or a few thousand. Um, I mean, that's not even enough to go to all the events. No, it's not. I mean, your your pro no. fee is a thousand of it. So I mean, that leaves you a thousand to two thousand dollars for travel money. Yeah, and you still have to go to four events. Correct. The pro fee is still something that just you know you know you make less doing. Yeah, there's me. You know you make less doing is doing podcast about cornhole. Yeah, like it's you should. Do that. <laughs> so, so. You just whatever number you're saying, just put a negative in front of it and then let it ride. <laughs> Um, I think that until Corno in two years, we can make, we can see that big jump happen. I think it's going to take non cornhole companies, right. To come in to and really yeah. push us over the edge. Yeah. That's what we yeah. need. I mean, I we need somebody to kind of break that barrier, um, to kind of really get into it. Like who's going to sign the first, like Nike or Adidas contract. And, you know, that's going to be the big deal. Well, I'm also like you, I think a lot of bigger money is starting to see what Jason McCannon was able to do in a short amount of time in the game of cornhole. I think Uh, you're going to start seeing some people with deeper pockets roll in and whether it's buy up a smaller bag company and grow that or start their own company. I I, I can see it happening a little bit. I'm saying somebody like not back. I mean, that's going to happen too. Who's going to sign a sponsorship with Hey Dude? Yeah, I mean, like ninety yeah. percent of the cornhole players are not wearing me. their shoes. <laughs> no, it's not me. Listen, I get, I, listen, I'm not saying it's your style, but somebody's getting maybe Yeezy or something. I don't know. What do you What do you normally wear? Anything but Hey Dudes okay. and Crocs. I'd take a Yeezy deal. Yeah, that's like, right. I mean, why not something like that? But it's gonna take something like that for, and I don't think we're far off it. I think that as professional players, what are your guys' opinions on? I'm sure you guys have both been approached by like management groups. Is this something that eventually you think most of you guys is a smart move to kind of go towards that, to have somebody help manage either social media or your sponsorship deals, all that stuff. Cause I mean, you guys are both probably in a situation where like next year, I mean, it's going to be a lot more to manage. Oh yeah. Um, I definitely think uh, sports management is definitely a good thing. Yeah. Um, so I believe not right now. I don't think we need it. Um, but very maybe soon. in the next year or the next soon. two. Um, I definitely think that it would be uh, beneficial to have to have something like that. Absolutely. Like you said, once out of cornhole companies start coming in, that's more than likely when it's going to be necessary. That's going to be the big. That's yeah. going to be the big that's time. That's when the bigger money is going to be. And in. social media is going to start being needed at that point. So social media is the best marketing you can get. So can I ask you? You guys are not like I, I don't mean this to sound negative. You're not the most active on social media either. Not at all. Why? Mm. It's just not really my thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of the same way. Um, Bring out like a landmark or some some. But you both you both admitted how important it is, right? Do you don't you feel like you could be blown? Like you could even be a bigger name if like you started throwing up even just like highlight clips of you guys throwing. Yeah, I mean, like like in in DK, we're gonna be transitioning into your. Your, your new venture here in a second. Social media is a great tool to use to kind of venture it out. And that's you know, what I, part I, of- No, I use social media for Sorry, for that, for me uh, that, just not so much for me playing. Okay. Because Tony, I think you're missing out on a huge opportunity because you're younger. How old are you, 19? 
Yeah. You're 19, right? You hit that huge demographic of all these young dudes that they can still relate to, that you're a pro player. And they might not even know who the fuck you are, but you know who they know who it is, like Timmy Jonas. You know what I mean? They know, like, these other, they know Adrian Johnson. I feel like, yeah. and you've, and nothing against them, but like, you've had the success on the main stage. You know what I mean? You're already a big name in the sport. So just think how big you could be if you put a little effort into it. I, I think I'm going to start soon. TikTok tone. I don't know about TikTok. TikTok tone. I love it. <laughs> Listen, dude, I, I would love to see you just rocking all the dances in between each throw. Oh, uh, that's definitely not happening. <laughs> <laughs> You would never see me dancing. No way. <laughs> no, but I, it's just it's something I found interesting because when I messaged Derek on Facebook, I didn't know if you were going to get back. Like, I had one of your buddies that actually messaged me a while back, and he's like, hey, if you ever need to get in touch with Derek, let me know, and I'll get you in contact. He doesn't really check Facebook that much. So, and I started, like, looking. I'm like, oh, you know, you got, neither one of you guys have, like, a whole lot of stuff on social media. So I was just wondering, like, why it was that you guys didn't feel like – you needed to right now or if you thought it was important obviously both think it's important you know it's a big tool so i'm happy to hear that maybe you're going to be using it a little bit more often most of the time it's just like i don't know what to post yeah i, don't I know. get that so it's just like if something happens that's like okay yeah i can definitely like use that then i'll do something with it but it's just like just every day like random cornwall stuff i've no idea what to do with that that's part about it is 2022 you can go pay somebody probably 50 bucks a month they'll handle handle it all for you that's true yeah <laughs> just something to think about again i'm not pushing it either, either way i just feel like it's a huge opportunity you guys could take kind of going into that all right it's dk we're switching gears here a little bit you started right. a new venture i can't remember exactly how long ago it was but i saw that you were kind of marketing yourself as um a cornhole i guess instructor right is that what you're kind of yeah, going by? Yeah. i thought the words you used were guru yeah i mean that's it I mean, <laughs> so basically you um you have been doing lessons primarily one-on-one -on -one. um i do one-on-one -on -one, uh you know in person or virtually um okay. and then i do also like seminars and clinics okay uh, so with you know groups let's say i am in i'm a listener and i'm listening to you right now and i'm like oh man like I kind of suck, but I want to get better at this. What would they, what can they expect? Like, like a typical session? Like, what are you guys kind of kind of like going over? So kind of, we go over the whole foundation of, you know, their throw. So we'll go over stance, grip, release, uh, form, uh, you know, all that good stuff. So by the time I leave that first session, um, they're going to have the foundation to where they can kind of build up themselves, uh, you know, and go from there. So you have, I think, one of, like, the prettiest throws, like, best releases. Like, you know, if you, like, looked at a film, right, and you look at how you should, like, throw a cornhole back, like, you're, you're one of your, th like, it would come to mind. Like, somebody like Matt Guy wouldn't necessarily come to mind, like, with how the back comes out of his hand. How, do, when you are teaching somebody, is it hard to, like, to kind of convey what you're trying to say and be like, just do it like I do? Or do you kind of just work with what you have? And if this is what feels natural for them, you're going to just try to tweak it and make it the best fit for them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I don't always try to teach my way uh, because, you know, what I do may not work for the next person. Uh, the cool thing about this game is, you know, no matter what kind of style throw you have, there's always going to be a different foundation or a different technique uh, for that person um, that may not work for me, uh, but it works for them. And that's um, another cool thing. You know, I've, Kind of acquired in you know over my 15 years of playing is all the different types of styles and techniques and foundations for you know all the different types of throws so do you go over like game strategy do you make suggestions to them like as you're going like hey like your type of bag throw and what you prefer slick bag you know like let's just focus on you putting four bags in the hole or hey you like you you seem like you throw like a slower bag well like you know, this is, I'm going to try to work on certain shots with you, or are you really just kind of sticking with the basics or does it, does it matter how advanced the player is or? Um, so I've actually, um, I've worked with, you know, from beginners to top level pros. Okay. Um, and, you know, I offer everything from, you know, the form strategy uh, technique uh, to even in-game situations, uh, you know, what shot selection is, you know, available for each situation and what, you know, what is more beneficial. Um, so, I mean, I, I offer, you know, 
uh, everything there is. Um, and I've had, you know, I've had good success with it so far. How many, uh, like about how many lessons have you given out so far? Wow. <laughs> um, that many? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I would be able to tell you a direct number. Um, how many in-person lessons have you given? I, I wouldn't be able to tell you a number. Really? Let's say how um, many states have you visited doing lessons? Four. That's pretty cool. Um, I'll say I've worked with in the last three months um, over a hundred people. Oh, yeah, huh? Can we? Can we? If you don't want to answer this, I understand. Can we talk about like pricing? So, like, let's say you want like you were, you had to fly to Florida, and I wanted do you do you have like a okay if I'm going to go all the way to Florida. We need to a lot at least this minimal amount of time kind of thing. Yeah, so um, kind of when I travel out of state, um, I usually require a eight to ten hour minimum. Um, versus, you know, if you're around my area, you know, an hour and a half or closer, um, you can kind of you know get whatever you want. Okay. Um, the pricing wise, you know, um, it's if you get eight to ten hours, I normally mark it down to a hundred uh, an hour. Versus, you know, if you were a local and you just wanted to do one hour, uh, it would be two hundred dollars. So I'm kind of giving you half off um, when I when I come to you. So you pay for that, and then my travel. Okay, that's fair though. I mean, listen, you're giving your services. I think people would be willing to pay. I mean, shit, do you know how much money people are dropping on bags? Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, that's um, and you're gonna much. get better at it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's ridiculous. So when you first announced this, I'm assuming you probably heard, you know. I've, listen, you don't. You're not going to be successful unless you have haters, right? Did you get any backlash at first? Did you hear anyone? Oh yeah, hard yeah, time for about sure. It? Um, I mean, definitely. You know, people say, uh, you know, you can save money by just watching YouTube, um, or you know, it's it costs too much. But you know, the way I look at it, it's kind of as uh, if you're investing in yourself, um, you know, to learn and get better. Um, you know, if you if you look at you know say a uh, professional golf, for instance, um, if you go get lessons from Tiger Woods and, you know, I'm not comparing myself to Tiger Woods yeah. at all, but, you know, just say if you go to him for, you know, a weekend, what, what do you think you're going to pay for that? I mean, you're going to pay five, ten thousand dollars or maybe even more. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say five, ten thousand an hour and you're buying lunch and dinner. <laughs> um, but, but virtual prices are, are cheaper. Um, they're not as efficient because it's not hands-on, but I still have had great success virtually as well. Um, that's going to be um, 180 for an hour and 100 for a half hour. Okay. And the cool thing with the hour is you can break it into two 30-minute sessions. So you can basically, you know, get, you know, two 30-minute sessions for 90 each. That's awesome. That's legit. So if people wanted to contact you, I think you just started a new Facebook page, right? Yep. It's, uh, it's called the DK Way. Okay, we'll make sure we share that um, tomorrow. Just yeah, it'll so be in the show notes. We'll put in the show notes and everything. We'll, we'll okay, yeah, awesome. There. I so, appreciate it, guys. Derek, so, I have I have one question up. for you. Um, have yes, you come sir. across like a hopeless student yet? I have not. Um, to be honest. All right, um, I'm be, being I, I'll pay for I'll I'll pay for a lesson then. <laughs> you can put that notch in your belt. Um, now I have had some come across to where I didn't have the answer right then and there, um, so I kind of had to work on finding that answer. Okay um which is kind of something I like to do you know I don't like to just give up uh say you know I don't know I can't help you um you know I can always try to find that answer for them well the fact that you're willing to search for that answer is I mean says enough right there well what I, what I want to do is I want to pay for you to come out and give us lessons and we do like some like combined content stuff um, okay. I mean, I think it like, could be a cool opportunity obviously we'll pay price and everything have you come out but I want you to come out the week of like a Cleveland regional. So you stick around, maybe play the regional. You know what I mean? Okay. Get to meet some of the people get, around here. Get an easy See, win. You know what I mean? It's not like the Northeast. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go up there and kick everyone's ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come around here. But uh, we'll talk about that after the show when we can kind of plan that, work that out. But I think okay, I said, yeah. we'll talk I'll definitely phone. be down for that. We, I said, I thought that you were way ahead of your game. I think you mentioned in golf and how every pro player has a swing coach eventually the sport is going to get to where everyone's going to want someone outside that can look at the film or look at them and be like, I have, I have some sort of the gifts. Like I am just fucking up. Like what, what mechanically is going wrong? What can I change to get better? 
I think you're way ahead of the game. I think that you have the knowledge and you've been good for such a long time. I think you're like the perfect guy to kind of kickstart all this uh, cornhole teaching stuff. I think it's great, man. And the fact that he's the first one really doing it, he's just, yeah. he's just trailblazer. You get to set it up, man. Yeah, you get to set it up. I mean, you charge whatever. The, listen, you a hundred dollars an hour, man. That's nothing. I mean, it's, if it's something that you're gonna enjoy, and you're gonna have fun, yeah. You know I mean, you get to go out and play cornhole for five or six hours, get away from your wife or your kids or whatever. <laughs> you'll get to play. I mean, that's hey, me. I pay gonna give me heck for hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I get hundred. I pay hundred dollars. My wife doesn't listen to the show. That's why I'm being so brave. But like, I pay hundred dollars to do that. Someday too. she will. Yeah, she will. <laughs> she won't be on next week. <laughs> uh, so switching gears just a little bit. So, Tony, you got a new partner this year. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, I, yep. So obviously it was a contraband. Like, obviously you guys want to all stick together. Um, how do you feel like you and Noah gel? I feel like you guys have like a, it see, and again, I don't know you guys at all. It seems like big brother, little brother relationship kind of thing. Um, Hunter Thorne describes it as I am his son. Like literally <laughs> just like he raised me. Okay. Noah says the same thing. He's like, you're my son. I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> He seems like um, he's so even keeled most of the time when he's playing with other people. But when I've noticed he plays with you, he seems he, like he's a little <laughs> bit more aggressive, right? And he gets oh, yeah, more yeah. animated. Does that bother you at all? No, I don't care. Okay. Hey, do you remember? You must be talking about the Fredericksburg yeah. Uh, Open. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People were going crazy in the yeah. comments about that. It was just, I mean, I remember just watching because he's normally pretty calm, cool. Like mm-hmm. he'll get mad at himself if he misses a shot, but he's a pretty, like as a doubles guy, he seems like he's a pretty positive dude. You know what I mean? Like trying to pick oh, yeah. up partner and stuff. But with you, man, like you missed one shot. He seemed like he was all over your ass. <laughs> dude, does that, does that, like as a personality, does that bring out the best in you? I mean, it really just goes. Right. you guys are close enough like so it's him like if he yells like, at me i don't give a fucking shit like so yeah i think it just kind of keeps it but like lighting. it it yeah. just like it does help me like stay focused a little bit I'm like shit like i gotta i gotta stay in this like most of the time oh, you don't really start bad. yelling he doesn't really start yelling unless he's not throwing his grade <laughs> <laughs> and you're back when you start <laughs> so let me ask you so Especially with you guys, because um, like DK, I know you haven't been to a lot of the. Have you been to an open yet? Um, I played in one in Cincinnati uh, so, a while back. And you're and you're playing with Devin this year. Yeah. So Devin, I know has been partnering up with some different people. He's throwing great. How important is it to partner up with your pro partner before, or is it the fact that you guys are all professionals? If you throw, if you're throwing the same bag. Is there a big at the pro level? Is that chemistry aspect as important? Well, a hundred percent. But like okay. I, I feel like we've like the four of us, we've all like swapped, played with each other so yeah. many times. We already have a feel for each other. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like me and Devin, you know, we could go two years without playing a tournament, and then we could play again, and we would pick right back up where we okay. left off. Okay. Um, so, I mean, to answer your question, I think it's important to have that chemistry on the boards, but I think it's just important to have the chemistry off the boards. Okay. But say, guys, like, if I, I were to just pick up a new partner, then, yeah. yeah, that would definitely be, like, like, I would need to play with that person a couple times before, like, a big event. Okay. Now, last year, I mean, you didn't have that bad of a year. You and Justin, uh, ended up, I, I, where, yeah. where'd you guys end up at? Were you guys top 10? We were eighth. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You guys were top yeah, 10 we, doubles team. So, yeah, I mean, pretty good, yeah. You look at most most people from the outside, you see like Smith and Stranger, like top eight team. Like, oh shit, first year, you're a rookie. Justin's been around. I think that was the second year as a pro. Like, it makes sense that they partner yeah. back up. Did you guys, did you feel like you guys meshed at all? Like as a partner or was it, would you feel like it was a mutual decision at the end of the season, like to kind of go and find like a better fit for you as doubles partners? I, I believe it was more just mutual. Like I, I'm more of like, I want that bag to not move an inch when it hits the board. Okay. And I feel like Justin's more like he wants it to be a little bit slicker. Okay. And we just really couldn't figure out the exact, like speed like bag that would work for both of us we did end up finding like a good set of pro x's towards the end of the season last season okay that worked pretty well 
but it still wouldn't it still didn't get us like over the top where we wanted to be i mean it's crazy to me because you guys are ta- you're talking like you you barely squeaked in like you guys were like a top 50 team. <laughs> oh, no, no. you know what i mean but that's what it sounds like you know what i mean like, so you we finally found a bag <laughs> like, you know, there's teams that didn't even qualify there's, there's always room for improvement there's always room for improvement I get what you're saying though. Like you, you guys just couldn't. I mean, it's very similar to Sean and I. We can never find a bag that works for both of us. Still can't. And yeah, I mean, yeah, we're we're brothers, but like, I mean, I'm I'm taller. I like to throw the bag lower and harder, and he likes to he likes to slink it up there and just kind of let it melt in. And I, I don't have that touch. I like I. I, have I don't touch of a rapist. It's doesn't. just, He's I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's it's well documented. Like maybe maybe not in like police records or anything, but I mean, it's I it's just so don't have touch. You should watch me play flip cup. But we've talked about it before. We've talked about it on the show, <laughs> you know, dude. It's ridiculous. If you if, uh, you guys, oh, you're a little young, so you might, Tony. So flip cup is a game. Oh, that's I, right. I know flip cup. I know flip cup. <laughs> It's You've getting, only played it with water. It was okay. embarrassing. Like every time I, I go pick him up from school and I bring him to my campus because we we went to rivaling schools like five miles apart. So I go pick him up, bring him down, and like anytime he got on my team, I'm like, I don't like we're gonna lose. Like I just, <laughs> like, this kid beer pong on money, just, but ridiculous. flip cup like beer pong and just throw so, lasers and be so, money. So flip cup, I, I dude, I I flip it and it like spins ten times in the air before it lands. <laughs> I, I can't figure it out. Embarrassing. Then I watch other people just barely touch it. I'm like, why can't I do that? I just feel like yeah, I beer have to pong's smack so much better, up. anyways. It is. It's a lot more it fun. Is. But I mean, it depends. But only so many people can play. If you have a big group and everyone wants to get yeah, but if you're good at it, you keep playing. So yeah, so <laughs> if, you're, if you're good, it's you're just rotating everybody. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Um, but I think that this season is shaping up to be the most competitive. I mean, last year oh, you were part sure. of this. Oh, yeah. Last year, you're part of the, like this rookie class that everyone's touting as like it's going to be the greatest rookie class of all time. And then this rookie class came in, and you have some freaking studs in there. Um, like you guys, oh, said, yeah. like, a kid, I, a guy that I don't think is getting enough love and hype this year, Tanner Halpert is really. Oh, Tanner Halpert. Yeah. Well, and people are just. I like, think the reason he's not getting that love is because everybody already knows him. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, that's true, and that might be true. I just feel like. Like, tr- like, I don't know if you guys will ever watch like that stuff that you know the ACL puts out. Like, on Trey's watch list is like, oh uh, yeah. Well, no fucking shit. You could put them on there every <laughs> fucking week. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, put them on your top five watch list. Like, the motherfucker's probably gonna finish top five in singles anyway. So it's not exactly like a bold <laughs> statement you guys are putting up there. You know what I mean that you're <laughs> that you're picking up. But how do you how are you guys do you think it's gonna be different this year? Because there's really no. How do I put this play? Like, gimme games anymore, right? There were let's no. be let's be honest. There were games last year that you guys would have seen. You've been, been happy like, about. All right, like I'm I'm happy yeah. I'm seated where I'm at, right? But there's there's yeah. none of that. How do you have to change your mindset going into this season? Um, you can't take nobody light. I mean, you know, start. You really should one. never take anybody light. But now you just if yeah, you're not but, hot. Like before, you could kind of get maybe a warm up game or so that you didn't yeah. have to worry yeah. about. Now you you don't. I don't think you have that warm up game. Hell no. um, I think as soon as you start, um, it's go time. <laughs> you just I mean, got to pray that that day is your day. I mean, think about it. Like, let's say, I mean, you could have walked, you could have had, like, I'm sure you guys know the name Corey Gilbert, right? Yeah. yeah. You want to feed in the, I mean, if you don't pay attention and you're just like an, av- like an average pro, right? And you hop up the board and you see Corey Gilbert and you don't recognize because now, like, Tony Smith or Matt Guy or Derek King, and you see Corey Gilbert, you're like, all right, I'm good. And then before you know, light skin's up 21 nothing on your ass, and you're going home. Yep. You know what I mean? Like that's what's going to be like almost every week this year. Yeah. Do you do you think it's? Let me ask you the question we've been asking everyone: What's going to happen first? Are we going to see a junior player win nationals, or are we going to see a female win nationals in singles? What's going to happen? Female. First? Female. female. Who? Cheyenne. Cheyenne, you think it's inevitable? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is inevitable. Okay, I, I, I mean that's pretty much been the resounding answer. But I'm not gonna lie though, don't sleep on Samantha. No, that's it. Only, I lo- I love Samantha, and we're talking about Finley, right? Yeah, yeah. I love Sam Finley. She's been on the show. She's a sweetheart, lover. She shits the bed on the main stage though. She has I don't know. Not I've, single, I've seen her. Singles. I've seen her throw. I've seen her throw great on the main stage. She can, and but not in singles yet. You know what I mean? I'm talking about in singles. Do you think she has the game to go all the way through? 
and beat everybody. Matt Guy in singles. Mm. Tony Smith in singles. I think she can, yes. She could. Like, is like I said, like, if is that, whoever or, is like, hot. Uh, Dar- is or is it Alex Hicks going to go? Or is um, – I'm trying. Caleb Batson. I mean, yeah, I mean he's still a junior. Kids, and... You know what I mean? Like, these guys could all get hot. And that's why – I think it's. Do you think there's more juniors that have potential to win a national, or do you think there's more females that could have a potential? And to me, that's what it comes down to. I think you give the edge to females because I think you think Cheyenne Renner right now yeah, is I think arguably there's a more top player in the world with potential, but there's a dominant one, there's, female. There's Cheyenne. I completely agree. Yeah, I mean Cheyenne. Cheyenne's like, experience alone, when she gets to the main stage, it's not going to rattle her. She's been there. She's done yeah, that. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. Any of these juniors that get there, I mean, they could go on, you know, a, a perfect run yep. all the way up to there and then just completely shit the bed as soon as they hit main stage. We just don't know. We'll just have to yeah. see. So, DK, um, you said before, like, you've only played in, like, the one open. Obviously, you're doing, like, a bunch of the training and stuff. Are you still playing a lot yourself, like, singles and stuff like that? Like, do you go to regionals around your area and stuff? Um, so, this keeps me pretty busy for the most part. Okay. Um, but I mean, the good thing about that is when I'm doing these lessons and instruction, um, I'm also throwing as well. Okay. So, I mean, you know, I, I get, you know, a few hours of practice every day. Now, is this your full-time job right now? Uh, yes, this is right, So doing. go support this dude. All right. It's a full-time job. And Tony, he'll make you better at cornhole, which, I mean, you're not going to get that from listening to our podcast. We'll make you buy bags, but <laughs> we're not going to, we're not going to help you out with your cornhole game. We can pretty much tell you obscure people that are doing well in the country as well. So we have a knack for that. So the, the one question I want to ask you, um, when you had like a little hiatus last year when you were playing with Trey and you came back, and the one thing that was pretty evident when you were playing is that you had like this, this hitch, right? Um, if you want to call it that, right? Like here you would go to throw and you kind of stop. What, what do you attribute to that? Like, was it um, the bag not feeling well in your hand? Was it, you know, were you going through something? Like what, what was going on with all that stuff? Do you want me to be honest with you? I would love um, you to. It's, listen, it's, it's completely up to you. We, that's why I asked you before we started recording, if I could ask you. you be. You tell um, me. No, I mean, if I told you one specific thing, I would be lying to you um, because I still to this day have no idea okay. what caused it. Okay. Um, if, I, if I had to make my best guess, um, I would say it was, I mean, it was all mental. Okay. Um, I was going through a lot of anxiety and depression at the time. Um, and I really think that kind of contributed to that, um, okay. to the mental part of the game. Um, it's a lot better now. Um, I, you'll hardly see me do it. Um, I'll do it a couple times, but it's just because it doesn't feel right in my hand. Okay. Um, but for the most part, um, it's gone. Um, yeah, I didn't but, see him do it once today. But the thing is, man, I um, – It's because you don't make him uncomfortable, Tony. <laughs> <Exactly>. I um, – <laughs> I, I, I don't know what caused it. Um, okay. I don't know what caused it to go away. Um, but I, I can tell you this. It, it almost drove me to quitting. Listen, are, um, you happy, are you happy with what you're doing now? Like, do you love coaching, like doing these lessons and stuff like that? Oh, man, it's, it's so um, – it's very rewarding to me um, just to see the success that I'm helping, you know, these people reach. Um, and that, that itself is a reward enough. Um, so, I mean, yeah, in, general, I, in general, it seems like you're doing well, like you're happy with life and everything. I think that that's a big part of it. I mean, you're still a professional athlete, whether you want to call it cornhole or whatever it is. Listen, it, it goes to whether you go into work or whether you're playing cornhole. If, if everything in your in your normal life is not going great, then, you know, there's a, there's going to be hitches along the way. But as long as you smooth it out, how, whoever, who gives a shit what, what, what solved it, right? As long as you're happy now and all smoothed out. There's, you don't ever need to go back to that route, but I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I've been a big fan of you since to go, you know, be doing this. I've been wanting to get you on the show forever, but I knew it, sound, it seemed like you maybe were going through some stuff last year, but I was so happy when I saw you start doing these lessons. I thought it was a cool opportunity. I'm like, as soon as I saw your Facebook page up, that's why I messaged you. I'm like, listen, we got to get this guy out here. I think what you're offering is like, so next level, we got to promote this shit. Like you should be traveling the country every fucking weekend going around and like, so that you're in a position next year where you have to think hard if you even want to be a cornhole pro because you're so busy doing these lessons <laughs> and stuff. I think you can set the market doing all that stuff. And I, I don't know what your plans are, but I'm hoping that, you know, if we could do a little bit and help you out blowing this thing up, I, I'd be happy. That's for sure. Hell yeah. Um, I mean, I, um, 
if I had to say, I would definitely love to keep doing this, uh, you know, for the rest of my life. Um, I, I enjoy it that much. It's awesome. Hell yeah. Is it listener question time? Yeah. Let's go. Do you have it pulled up? I do. Okay, cool. We'll let it rip. I'm going to pull up a uh, Patreon. You know, I got a, so Jimmy humans called us out by name to ask this Tony, question. Tony, so I'm Tony, sorry. I'm sorry, right, but Jimmy. Jimmy's our boy. So we're, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to ask it, but he said, what will have a higher peak? Tony's nose or the amount of roll bags he throws this season. <laughs> and that is Jimmy Humans, folks. That's not that's, us. Yeah, that's Jimmy Humans. Uh... That's fucked up. That's fucked up. <laughs> oh my god. So Jimmy, you got I his answer. That. He said that's fucked up. Uh, <laughs> we can we can move on from that. Uh, so actually i'm curious to hear your guys answer to this one one of one of our boys he might have thrown it on the patreon too he's a new patreon member but lucas meyer um he asked what's better power rangers or ninja turtles i love this one i'm curious if tony even knows ninja turtles Turtles. okay all right and then he follows it up with what's your favorite ninja turtle donatello oh really all right leonardo yeah, I mean that's the classic one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually. Bro, bro got a katana. He's got a katana. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but I'm yeah. actually Donatello as well. So me and DK, Tony, yeah. we're yeah. there's something yeah. about bow staff, man. I don't know. <laughs> is, it's way more. If I could defeat you with a bow staff while you're holding a katana, <laughs> guess what? I'm way more badass. Yeah, that's why Leonardo is the leader. <laughs> Thank you, right? Is he He's though? Cut your fucking is he really? Look. I didn't see him bringing the pizza in every night. He didn't have no, that was either. He didn't need to because everyone <laughs> just listened to him. We just order shit. Anyways, Andrew Petrovich wants to know: Would you rather be in a situation? This is for both of you. All right. Would you rather be in a situation where a DK push shot wins the game, or in a situation where a Tony Smith roll bag wins the game? Roll bag. Roll bag. Roll bag. I don't okay. know. Okay. I'm going roll bag. Okay. Is that I accurate? I genuinely don't know. Okay. Then you still it de- use it. Do you still use it as often, even with the contraband bags? Oh, I, I, I'm loving these contraband bags more than my old OG Reynolds. Okay. I can yeah. do everything. You have every shot with exactly. Well, we've we've yeah, heard of. Perfect. We've heard your old OG Reynolds. I mean, they We're should disgusting. be probably put in the Smithsonian. <laughs> they, I hear so many busted. stories about those things. Did they they really? busted. busted. Oh no shit! Oh. But that contraband, yeah. the carpet that he uses on that is some of the fate. Like, I'm not a huge carpet bag guy, but the bags I do like throwing carpet bag are that. Like, uh, I think Bag Daddy also uses some of the similar stuff. But yeah, that contraband, that yeah, crossovers. Yeah, those are that that carpet is nice stuff. And again, as it breaks down, it's weird because like it come a little bit faster, but it also Whoa. tacks up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right, you guys to caught it too. Told, All right, you guys I caught it too. To All right, I, uh, to. I just want to I want to put it on record too. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Reynolds, I know you listen to every episode and you love us dearly, but your bags broke after like probably five thousand games on them. So tighten it up, bud. <laughs> tighten it up. Uh, <laughs> so I wouldn't I'm doubt sure it'd be more than that. It could be more than five thousand. So, Tony, I'm sure you kind of get yeah. sick of this question about like the roll bag and like how you do it and all that stuff. There are a few a people bit. that asked this question was uh, like Matt Kramer wants to know like how long did you practice it before like you felt like you just had it down. See, like I genuinely thought that I created that shot. Okay. So like I started just trying to cut just a normal cut shot like yeah. around things and then one time i accidentally just straight hopped it over and i was like shit how do i do that and then just kept doing that until i figure out how to do it and then maybe to get like consistency it took me like uh, let's say like three months or so okay but like with those reynolds that I used to throw like I would I was able to manipulate those things so like perfectly with just the way everything felt like it just everything felt exactly how I wanted to so I feel like my consistency grew very quickly with those things and then I was just able to transfer I have have a question for him too does your grip change on the position of the bag based on what shot you're throwing uh, very slightly, but yes. Okay. 
right. Then how how long ago do you feel like you developed this throw, like you, this the shot? Uh, I want to say twenty eighteen. Like okay. February, like somewhere in like February. Okay. Because I mean, I you know I think of Sandy Prinky. She's been doing it like. There's a. I think she's the <laughs> oldest AC, active ACL like, member. Just member. She's like I think eighty. I do. She, I, I'm yeah, so I, can't, she I, I, I don't know so her. Sorry. Yeah, I, we love you, Sandy. But we've been. I mean, I hate dude, playing her because she, she just has been rolling bags, bags forever. This motherfucker would just roll. <laughs> <laughs> the way you do it controlled, so like the way she would throw it, it wouldn't look controlled. But dude, she could run up. She could it. run up six straight bags and you roll in the whole. Like, <laughs> you thought you'd have to help her walk over to the board, and then halfway, if you're playing her in singles, you're like, I'm gonna make this bitch pick up all the bags. Yeah, because she's, I mean, she's a, she's a competitive level, yeah. level player, but oh, she yeah. throws nines and tens all yeah. day. No, You're like, like, I'm done. Yeah, I, I see you right this through this chick. Um, so uh, one more question kind of going off the roll shot and we'll kind of go from away from it. Bud Wilson wants to know, is there, what's the easiest way to achieve like the back load needed to throw? Like, is it grip on the bag? Is it wrist angle? Like, what do you try to focus on when you're trying to throw that? Um, well, for me, it's not so much grip. It's release point and where, how like deeply I'm angling my wrist. Okay. So like when I'm releasing, my palm is basically facing my face. Okay. And I'll come across my body to get like the spin. Okay. Because if I were to just straight go like this, it wouldn't go anywhere. Okay. Like, so I spin it by coming across and then keep my fingers pointed up the whole time. Okay. So it's already coming out up. Okay. Uh, he, I kinda, he describes it very well if you're watching on YouTube. You yes, can see yeah. his hand, actually. It shows you how to get underneath that bag. I, I wasn't giving you shit. That's actually true. You, can, <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job explaining it because, I mean, that's that's really the key is you have to come across your body and keep that keep that wrist angle up to undercut the bag. I mean, it's, yeah. it's really the only way to get it to achieve it regularly. Yeah. The way I look at it is like you need to be able to get under the bag. Like I look at it like people have either an over bag throw or an under handed like bag throw, which you can either get under and actually do the roll shot like how you should or how like most consistently. Yeah. Or you could do the over, which would be like the nose down, like flop. Yeah. But you really want to get under and get that nose way up there. Well, if you're, if you're under, that tends to give you the, the hop, which I like, I like to call it, it's like a little hop and then it grabs the bag just in front of it. And it kind of gives it that, that tumble from there. Yep. And that's really like, that's the most successful roll shot that I've seen in the game. The, the front loaded one. Yeah. I mean, it's a good shot to have if everything's like really clogged up, but in my opinion, you got to throw that bag pretty hard to get it to flip. Yeah, which you would end up yeah. pushing them as well. Exactly. I feel yeah. Like, yeah, correct. I feel like it's only you gotta fair. you gotta it's a situational bag as opposed to something that could be more of like a an offensive bag, which is like the the hop roll bag. Yeah. So what I found myself using way more often than anything recently is like a a cut roll. Okay. So basically, if the bag is like perfectly in the middle, I would aim to the right and have it so one side of the bag pops up and it'll kind of like cartwheel around it. Kind so, of what I did to you a lot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now do you, so do you see only, that shot like making the, almost making the hole bigger then when you're throwing that? Cause you're, you're hitting it at that angle from the side. As long yeah. as you have that cut, I feel so, like you're good, but you've got to have that cut. Yeah. But if you don't get that side of the bag up, and over the bag you're trying to go over it's just gonna it's just gonna sit there like right. it's just gonna stop I, i'm telling you so i've been try, so we've been playing i don't know like what two and a half probably three years now like yeah. competitively and stuff is the one shot i can i cannot get a bag to go right to left i i just can't I, i've tried so DK, when you come up for lessons, that's going to be the one thing I, I want i need to get down he doesn't have I, enough I, supination I, in his I wrist i can he get i can know if you play me, it's almost like playing a lefty who can cut a bag because I can go left to right easily, and I just stop fighting it. 
I just don't try to throw a flat back and I just know my back's going to kick right. So like I can play around a blocker that way, but if I ever need to cut it back, I'm fucked. Like I might as well just go for an air block. That, that's that's what I was saying earlier. I got you. I, I got you. A, that's where like an underhanded throw player would be. They would go right to left more often than not. I feel like overhand, it goes left to right. Okay. More than not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, I agree. Yeah, because oh, yeah. I mean, you, you just think about the wrist angle. Yeah, your, my bag naturally your, kicks your, left yeah. to right. So when we first started getting, when we made the jump from like, we made the jump to like kind of like a low level advance, right? Like we went through in, intermediate pretty quick. We went through then like competitive. We did pretty well. And we, now we're like stuck at this, like, yeah. we're never going to get Thanks, better. COVID. We were able to like play a lot. And now but we like, can't. We, we got through competitive really well because we were throwing pro advantage and I just stopped fighting it. I'm like, listen, if I know how the bag kicks and goes, I don't have to throw a flat bag. If somebody wants to throw a block, I'm just going to throw it left of their bag. And it's just going to kick over the right instead of doing the opposite. So I just stopped fighting it. But I've learned over time that not all bags are like that. And my best throw, <laughs> if I'm trying to stroke and I want to go for a high PPR, I'm just better with a, I can throw a flatter back now, but I like, I tend to like a slicker back. So slicker bags, you can't get it to manipulate as much. So I've kind of gone away from that, but I would love to learn. And from someone like DK, like what physically am I doing wrong to throw? A, Cause I feel like anytime I try to come underneath it and I've heard, try to keep your pinky high and all these things, it just comes out of my hand. So fucking weird. And like, I'm like, I'm, it's too embarrassing to even try it. Like, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> so that's what, um, we, that's what we have to like end the live stream anymore. and like leave. Uh, yeah. I mean, I had this, this good one, Nicholas Howell. He okay. always comes up with bangers. Uh, so he said, we know that you both already have, nicknames dk and big tone uh you know they were wondering if you could give each other a nickname what would it be uh long nick <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> long, long <laughs> i don't even know at least he didn't say high peak or something i mean that would have been <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, that's fucked up <laughs> Jimmy's got the same nose as me. <laughs> he does. I, that's why I thought it was perfect for him. That's like I mentioned it. Did you happen to see the Airwolf post that they posted about him? Because you know he's sponsored by Airwolf Athletics. They're like, you know, for like uh, to feed him. Yeah, to fucking feed him. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was rolling this morning. I saw that. I just pictured like you know the sad Sarah McLaughlin music playing and Jimmy just playing there with like a tumbleweed or something. You know, like. <laughs> Show that is so <laughs> so wrong on so many levels. First thing that came over. <laughs> All right, so what's what's DK? Give you a nickname? Oh, this man's built like a grizzly bear. He's okay. called Grizzly or something. All right, so good old grizzly. Like like winter green. Yeah, <laughs> winter green. <laughs> winter green. <laughs> okay. All right. So funny, funny. Uh, last week we had Corey Gilbert on. And he was talking about how he used he formerly chewed right, and his favorite was Grizz Wintergreen, and that was one of his favorite like breaking methods. <laughs> like he would have like this little like skid mark on his bag because thumb was always dark from getting pinched. And stuff. <laughs> Some lady posted on Facebook today. If she's listening, I'm not trying to make fun of you. I just I genuinely thought it was funny. She wanted to know what the pros were putting on their bags to slow them down. But she's like, I heard the interview on this podcast last week, and he said it was something about like evergreen or winter green, and it made like, a <laughs> and I fucking lost it. I read that shit, but I know the heart of the messenger been this lady got this all wrong. It was, you know, she's like, Yeah, he said he got it out of a can. I'm like, oh, he definitely did. He sure like, did. A little bit like, I got a it. So if you're listening to this, I can't remember your name, but I'm not making fun of you. I just thought it was a really funny uh but you can message me. I'll give you the whole lowdown on how that might work. Yeah, I mean, you can find it at any local gas station. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's about, about three ninety-five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about three ninety-five. You'll be good. Unless you're in Kentucky, they sell that shit at sixteen. I'm sure. <laughs> at the right gas station, right? <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think like 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 the perfect spot to end. Yeah, we'll um, we'll we're, cast off. We're gonna let everyone else go. We'll have you guys hang on with us for just a minute, but. Um, I want to take you guys. I know you guys were busy all day. Thanks for taking some time hanging out with us. It's been a long time coming. Um, I actually reached out to Brendan Ahern and was like, listen, 
we didn't have Tony on this week just because you guys decided you were done. I swear to God, like I didn't, like I, I really didn't even know this was gonna happen. But thanks for joining us, anyways. We appreciate it. Uh, big shot. I want to give them a quick shout out. We forgot to do that on our episode. Yeah, our, our uh, IP dogcast for now. We're gonna. We'll, yeah, we'll I don't have any. Yeah, yeah. I pour. I finish just, my drink, but I pour a little bit out for you guys. I'll pour the rest our of my homies mouth. out in Boston. So enjoy your guys' time off. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what's coming up next for you, all you guys. But DK, thank you very much for coming on. Um, we're going to share all your shit uh, tomorrow on social media. So make sure you check out our page. Go give this guy a like, a follow. Hit him up if you want some cornhole lessons. I mean, it's time. It, I, I can't wait to, to get some lessons from you. We're excited. And I hope nothing but big things for both of you guys. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having us. Uh, I can. I think I can speak for both of us. We really enjoyed it. I'm glad. And I might be there to be the bag boy. You, okay. you never hey, know. Listen, you can come out, be the bag boy. Come on out. Come on out. All come our dreams out. will come true. Come on out. He's got he's got a guest room. You guys. Can I might I might start taking Tony with me on all my trips so he can be the bag boy. Now, there you listen, go. I, you got to give him an outfit though. Listen, he needs to start yeah. building a resume. You can put ACL Pro under there. You can yeah, put bag, bag boy. He'd be good. I mean, you never know. People might be in that's a new nickname. Yeah, Noah's Noah's son. Boy. You know, <laughs> we'll just we'll keep the pedigree going. All right, fellas. As always. We hope you throw it straight and it's nothing but four baggers from here on out. Cornhole it. Later.